Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to be doing a book review for grade six, which should give you some insight of how to use Purple Mash productively to set an activity and also to derive a mark. I'm going to be looking at the English curriculum of grade six. So we go to the tools over here or the teachers. We can have a look at the resource sharing section over there or if we, we, we've got spelling resources and we scroll down, we've got the curriculum over here using Purple Mash in South Africa. That's the CAPS curriculum. So if I click on that, you can see straight away we've got English home language. I've clicked on the grade six and I'm scrolling down in the CAPS document or the CAPS planning for Purple Mash. And we're looking for term three, the first week of term three as that's something quite relevant for this moment. And you see here we've got week one to two, writing and presenting. It's a book review and it's term three, one and two, and it's about Roald Dahl. It's a Roald Dahl book. And here we have a link which will take us to a Purple Mash resource. I'm sure this exercise will prove useful to teachers who don't necessarily teach English. We see over here says Marvelous Medicine, George's Marvelous Medicine. It's a book written by Roald Dahl. A useful little template that shows a book review for Roald Dahl's book. And we've got a green and a red button over here that we can add further pictures. And over here we've got some little prompts and that brings us into teacher's mode and we can make certain adjustments while in teacher's mode. So if you look at these little prompts over here, if I click on that green button, I would be able to add a further item to this. So it says add new entry. I'm going to write title the author and the, I'll do something about the biography of the author. Write a little about the author's should be saying um, author's life so we're talking about biography we'd like our children to kind of think a little about the life of the author here we've got a tooltip see the context of the author author's experience because the the author's life has some bearing on the story so in in the story but we will take that away so you can see that that offers something that's a prompt that assists the learner and guides them as they fill in the information there we got the opinion what are your thoughts about the story how many stars out of five would you give for the story it is a review after all and the synopsis so we would put those stars there where it says star rating so the children have got something to work through over here and we can just click edit on either one of those buttons we can take away and here we can do a bit of an editing and you can see I can make adjustments to this particular and here I'm going to delete one of them I'm just taking away what I wrote in and then we've also got these pictures that can be just added into the review we can even select pictures that are not shown there here I'm just going to click on some food bring in some broccoli and you can see it's been added to this panel let me just drag it in and the children can add further items to their their picture over here their book review so we have a little template from which we can work it's important for me to just remind you that we are in teacher mode so we're setting up a template for the children it's not the children can do whatever we're doing but we're just setting up an activity for them to do so it says here does your project have a checklist so i'm going to click choose to make a checklist and we've got a whole lot of different categories here yeah, it's um, lower text is organized into separate paragraphs and you're going to have to look at these very carefully but you'll choose one of those and it's a checklist to help guide the children through the process so i've clicked on that and you can see it says write a checklist so there's a checklist now available and as the children are writing they can click on each one of those when they've identified like it says i have remembered one space between each word and these are all writing tools just to guide and ensure that children have followed you can even add items as i've just done and here we can type in punctuation and i'm just trying to think of what i can write over here Mm, a little bit slow today let's have have i used speech marks maybe we've requested that children must use speech marks in their review they're probably going to give some quotation from Roald Dahl so we'd like them to use some quotes 
and from the actual book. So I'm just writing this. You obviously will choose whatever you find is applicable to you. And I'll just write in the tooltip section, quotation from the text. So you can see now it is written, have I used speech marks in the text of the quote? Children will click on the checkbox to indicate that they have done that. This will be something that will ensure that they have an ability to check that they've done everything. And you can even save that checkbox as I'm doing, putting it into my work folder. This is each teacher has their particular work folder. You will have your own and no one else will be able to get into your work folder. I'm going to call it my roll dial um, my roll dial checklist. I think that's probably okay and it's for grade six so i'm just going to go grade six save and let's put it into that particular folder and i'm just going to go through that whole process again so we've got this template and there's a help file and that's for editing clicking on editing does your project have help have a help pop up i'm going to just de-check that and we're going to save it just saving the whole template and we're going to put that also in my work folder so I'm going to just call it roll dial book review and I'll just save it in my work folder now if you want to see your work folder you go to this yellow icon over here and then you can see it says grade 6 roll dial book pre review book review so I'm going to open it and you can see now as it opens we'll be able to see everything that we have there I would like to also link up a if you see I've got my pictures but I would like to really add that that checklist that prompt that I showed you early on so you can see if I I go over here I click on browse it's going to find it in my work folder and I click on that and now it's linked the two together so that your checklist is linked up to the actual template you want to save the checklist and the template together because you're going to set it for the children to do as an activity and they need to have access to the checklist in it so I'm just saving again I'm going to overwrite my previous file and now everything is there so I can now set a to do and I'm going to just type in a description over here please do this sample activity so here you would write a description of what you'd expect and that little red button below it would be where you could do a recording a voiceover where children would be able to pick up on this on their tablets I'm going to just give it to an individual or two individuals in the grade six class I'm not going to actually give it to a class as such it's just a sample that's being used for you to see how it's done so I'm going to go with Cade and Keegan I think those two would be suitable and I'm going to set to do now as I click on that the activity will be found as the children start their purple mash they'll be able to see it in the to do section as well as the in the in the alert section it will be showing up that there is work waiting for them to be done and if you remember correctly I did indicate when it needs to be done by so you would indicate that in the dates now very often when you set a to-do, there is the need to make changes. You might find that you would like to edit what you've already placed there. So if I go to the to-do section and you see already here it shows the assignment is for two learners, Cade and Keegan, and we also have the edit button. And we also have the view folder here where we can see who has done their work. There's no one listed yet because it's no one's really done the assignment but let's go back to that and if you look over here I can go on the edit section and make changes so if I click on the edit button I can add in a different addition to the description section and just indicate something more that might have been overlooked and I would like to I've just indicated I'd like to see if you can do or show 
how to do this because it's just a sample exercise and I want the learners to be able to show how it to do is done. So I'm just going to say save changes and you can already see as it loads it's showing straight away and it'll also show this for the learners they will be able to see this as well. It will automatically adjust and be appropriate. What I meant was that the saving is instantaneous and it's seen straight away. Now you're going to find the to-dos and in the alert section over here or you could yeah you just click on that little go that little purple bell and that would take you to the section where you'd be able to see if I you click on view folder it'll show you who's done it and you can see I've just asked Keegan I've asked him to just do this one for me so you can already see it's handed in now if I click over here I can add comments and I'm just going to type a little comment to indicate that the work has been seen and I'm clicking over there to preview the work and you can actually have a good look at what the child has done it's all readily available for you to just peruse and see the aspects of the work now I'm writing a little comment here as you can see to Cade I thought it was Keegan actually and I'm going to put a little 7 at the end there because that will assist when you try to derive some marks which I'm going to show you in a minute. So we save and that would mean that the comment has been included with the mark at the end of the comment. We're going to extract this into Excel and that would assist us to derive a mark. So I'm going to just open it again just to show you opening it up and we can have a good look at the work that Cade has done, it's all clear and there you can see the checkbox and I'm just going to go back to the to-do and show you how to derive some marks from this. So I'm going to go view folder and again you do see that Cade's work is showing, it's there and I'm going to, if other children had it in their work we would click on that refresh button but now I'm going to show you report. Click on this button if you want to and that's table just to have a good look at the list of children who have done this activity. But clicking on report you see it says Excel or a PDF so I'm going to go with an Excel file and I'm going to go create report. Now this would take all the children in your particular class and it would list them and it would also list who has not done the activity. So you'll see there's a full list and it will also indicate the comment that you have added as well. There you go, it's loaded and you can see over here where it says file. I can see that Cade has done his and below it says pupils who did not attempt the to do and I did ask Cameron uh, sorry, Keegan, not to do it, so you find he's listed there. But you'll find, as I just enlarge this, or just make these cells a bit bigger, this column, let's just go there, you can see there's my 7, which is an ind indicator that the mark is at the end. Now we can put a simple little formula, right, and I'm going to list that cell, and then I'm going to take the first of the right hand side to feed that seven in there and that would be very easy to collect a whole list of marks for your whole class or you could even do it for the whole grade depending on your needs. I'm hoping that this is going to make you excited because it shows how easy it is to access marks and extract them from Purple Mesh. It's just a marvelous tool and you can see that seven over there could be and it's an indicator of a single individual, but it's just basically getting into this part of Purple Mesh and you know that you're going to go to that section where it said reports. I hope that you have found this video useful. It is hopefully a beginning and it offers you something to work from in your exploration of what Purple Mesh can offer you in your teaching. A big thank you to you for taking your time to watch this video.